uh, that uh, icon over there is virtual square is a team of developers studying the frontiers of virtuality I lead the group the group was created in Bologna I don't know 16 17 years ago and we have done uh, several uh, several uh, project our most famous process is VDE virtual distributed Ethernet which is a virtual Ethernet supported by many virtual machines like KVM, KMU, VirtualBox uh, or user mode Linux today I'm talking about uh, HDNS and fully qualified domain name DACP uh, we are dealing with uh, Internet of Threads, so our idea is that uh, it's anachronistic to give IP addresses just to interfaces or machine. Maybe each process in the future can have its own IP address. Uh, we need uh, stacks, uh, networking stacks uh, as uh, libraries, and uh, we need uh, IPv6 because uh, Given that we want to address each uh, process, so we need uh, a great number of uh, IP addresses available. Well, which is the problem with IPv6? Uh, from one side is that uh, you have to write down 128 bits uh, each time you want to, to write a, a, an address. Uh, it means, uh, I think, 32 hexadecimal digits. So it's a, it's a procedure very prone to error. And uh, yeah, and the second is that uh, you have to deal with uh, a DNS uh, addressing this kind of nodes. So the, I think the dream that uh, uh, a maintainer, a sysadm uh, working with DNS uh, a dream uh, that uh, this kind of person has uh, is to be able to to uh, add uh, a new node uh, just by writing those two lines over there. So I, I created this seminar in a circular way. First of all, I want to show you which is the goal of the topic of this seminar. And then we are going to see how to achieve that goal. So I want to add to the interface.d or interface uh, uh, file in etc network just those two lines uh, efface uh, uh, here the top zero is just an example the interface is you want to give an address uh, and just the name and uh, everything must be configured in an automatical way we want this to configure the actual IPv6 address of the machine, the DNS for the, for the direct, and the, IP, the DNS for the reverse resolution. How can it be done? Why? Because uh, IPv6 adoption is urgent, not only for uh, our Internet of Threads uh, processes, or virtual machines, but uh, even for uh, real machines, uh, in uh, late November, last late November, RIPE in Europe uh, emitted a, a warning saying that uh, they ran out of uh, IPv4 nets. Uh, the first idea is to use uh, the ACP. So for uh, in uh, IPv6 uh, terminology, stateful auto uh, configuration. There is uh, an RFC 4702 that says that the queries can include a fully qualified domain name, but this fully qualified domain name is usually uh, uh, added in order to update the DNS uh, once uh, the IPv6 has been uh, uh, calculated by the DHCP server. So th the DHCP is uh, responsible for 
generating the IPv6 address. And then uh, that uh, fully qualified domain name is used uh, to push uh, the, the pair name address uh, to the DNS. We have extended the idea of this, uh, of this field, of this uh, option. When the TACP server gets a, a query, including a fully qualified domain name, it asks the DNS, which is the IP address for that name, and the answer from the DNS is used to give the actual IPv6 address to the node. Okay, so uh, you can just uh, give the name and provided the DNS is able to give uh, an address to that name, the game is uh, completely closed. So uh, we have achieved this result. Uh, but uh, there is another point. This is the, the standard way. The, uh, this is how a fully qualified domain in the ACP works. Uh, the client ask, uh, uh, ask, uh, make a qu makes a query, but instead of uh, the, the DHCP returning the address, uh, it asks uh, the DNS server for the name resolution. And the second row is the same uh, set of actors, but uh, in order not to put too many errors, they are repeated. So. The, the, the answer path is from the DNS server, the IP address uh, that is uh, forwarded to the client. But this is not enough because uh, in this way you can give the name of the host, you can use the two lines, but you have to configure your DNS server in order to write your address. So you, we need a second idea. Hash-based IPv6 addresses. So, instead of uh, having uh, long and boring uh, tables in uh, the DNS uh, server, we generate the low 64 bits uh, of the IPv6 address uh, as a hash of the name. So, given the prefix uh, of uh, that network, you can uh, uh, just catenate uh, the prefix uh, and uh, a tail which is computed as a hash uh, out of the name and you have uh, a self, uh, an IPv6 address. It means that this kind of uh, DNS server, uh, if it has been uh, created for ROM MyCorp org, uh, is able to resolve any name ending in romemycorp.org. Maybe, okay. Maybe uh, the the IP the, the DNS server generates an IP address which belongs to no one. So. You have the DNS server which is able to translate anything that ends in .rom mycorp org. So, the idea is that now we have to say to the DNS server the prefix. We have reduced the, the, the complexity of the problem, but still we have to provide the the DNS server, this DNS server with the prefix. Actually, the DNS, the, the prefix can be computed by the DNS server itself. So let us see step by step how the process, the resolution process has been carried out. A client somewhere in the world wanna talk with wcube hash my name arc and it, it asks to the closest uh, DNS uh, the resolution. So there is the, 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 the recursion of the name server. At the end, uh, the query 
uh, uh, the query reaches the DNS server of mydomain.org. My, there is an error, obviously it was myname.org. Myname.org. The, the, the main server, which is a standard bind server, forwards the, because there is a, a, a um, uh, delegation, forwards the, the query to the hash DNS server who asks to this DNS server, which is the, the base address, uh, in order to have no configuration at all uh, in the hash DNS server, which can uh, handle many sub-domain uh, sub, uh, of myname.org. Uh. Now, the DNS server, the, DNS server the, the main DNS server replies with the base address. HDNS computes the, the complete address that is returned to the client. Okay, so in this way, I have just uh, to put a line saying which is the base address in the standard DNS server, and uh, everything can be uh, done without further configuration, but uh, baptize your new node, give it, give it a name. So, now we can use the two technology together. together. We can have the node asking the DNS, asking the DHCP server its, its address. The DHCP server asks the hash DNS the address, and in this way, everything converges and just by the name, giving the name, you can have the, the three goals, the IPv6 address, DNS for word resolution, what about DNS reverse resolution? HDNS takes a cache of the recently solved, resolved names and you can, uh, there is a configuration, you can, uh, you can uh, force uh, this cache to, to, to store all the resolution, but in such a case you can have uh, uh, out of memory attacks, uh, somebody who can want to resolve many, many names uh, that can fill in your cache. Uh, or you can, uh, uh, by an option, set the DNS server to store just the request coming from uh, the same net, uh, so the local requests. You can say, if you give IPv6 address, 64 of the IPv6 address uh, by hash, uh, you can have uh, collisions. Yes, uh, that's true in, in, uh, in theory, because uh, if you use some statistics, uh, there is uh, a, a application case of the birthday paradox. So, computing the number of uh, possible hash, uh, if you are uh, dealing with, with a network of, uh, of 1,000 nodes, uh, the probability of, of, of uh, hash collision is less than 10 to the minus 14. 14. So, it's uh, quite uh, low. In case it happens, you can uh, just change the name instead of WCube uh, web uh, or something like that, uh, and uh, uh, the probability drops uh, even more. If you have uh, more collisions, uh, it means that uh, you have better luck, and so you need to, to take uh, some, uh, some countermeasure about luck. Okay, demo scenario. Uh, Given that the talk is not so extensive, I decided to, to give you a virtual demo. So there is the scenario and there are slides in which uh, you can see the, 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 the sequence of commands and uh, uh, yeah, the sequence of commands and the expected output. The scenario is, has been uh, carried, on, carried out on uh, on a VDE network, but uh, as, uh, as the picture may, may make evident, uh, 
uh, it should be on a real network too, so uh, the, everything applies to real or virtual networks. In the local area network we have uh, the hash DNS, we have uh, the fully qualified DHCP server, and uh, uh, I'm a, a client on the same net, uh, okay, and somewhere I have a DNS server primary for, this is one of our domains, v2.cs.unibot.it. Okay, let us follow the, 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 the slides. Uh, can you see the, the cursor? It's a bit black, but uh, here in this part of the slide, uh, I've uh, copied some lines uh, from the bind 9 delegation. So, uh, the, whatever is hash uh, v, v square CS Unibody T, IT is dedicated to that. Uh, to set DNS server named uh, hash DNS, uh, which has uh, an IPv4 and IPv6 address. The next line, uh, hash v, v square cs uniboity dot map, uh, without a, a, a final dot, so it means that uh, it resolves uh, hash v, v square cs uniboity map v square cs uniboity is the base. Uh, address uh, for that uh, subnetwork. And for example, I use a C name to, to show that uh, uh, you can, uh, one question that may arise is that uh, the names are related to the, to the local area network. So if you want to give uh, 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 sibling names uh, in different area, local area network, uh, you can, uh, you, you will, uh, you will need to have a different uh, uh, base address, but uh, you can use C names. So you have uh, the name uh, uh, related to the physical position of the host. The name related to the physical position of the host, uh, which is uh, the one generated from the hash table, and the name, uh, the short name as a C name to the hash generated name. Okay, that's only the delegation. Then uh, I have connected my switch uh, to, to a switch connected to the internet. In the real world, this means I've connected one plug to the switch and the other plug to the router. I've started on uh, one host here on the virtual network, but you can do it in a real network. I've started the hash DNS. Uh, and uh, which are the arguments of hash DNS? This is uh, now this is a proof of concept. Uh, this, this is a proof of concept. Uh, working proof of concept. We are going. We are, we are in this time uh, rewriting the code base uh, in a, in a more complete, documented way. But uh, hash DNS, the common connected to the virtual network. Uh, this is uh, the the name, the, the suffix to have the base address. So this hash DNS, if it's query for a, a cache, which query blah blah, it, uh, it uh, searches in the DNS uh, cache with square CS Unibody T maps with square CS Unibody T. So you have the IPv4 address uh, with the, the default gateway, IPv6 address with the default gateway. And that's enough for the hash DNS server, no more configuration. Fully qualified domain name TSCP is even uh, simpler because uh, you can just start the, the, the server saying which is the interface of the virtual network it has to run. In. So let us uh, try some uh, experiments, uh, virtual experiments. Uh, one uh, experiment is uh, use this infrastructure to give addresses to namespaces because VDE now has namespaces. If you try, if you just uh, type uh, VDE ns, uh, VDE dot slash slash, uh, 
uh, we need dot slash slasher is uh, uh, as kind of URL in which you can use a different kind of technologies. Uh, VDE is a legacy technology of VDE, but you can have uh, VXVDE or many others, uh, ZERP if you want. Uh, now, uh, unfortunately, the AC client uh, uh, does not have uh, a option in common line to, to, to say send a fully qualified domain name. So the only way is to create uh, a temporary configuration file to say just that option. So I create this uh, temporary configuration file with this, with this command, just a single line of configuration. And then I ask by the DAC client uh, to give an address. And just using this, the whole infrastructure gives this namespace an IPv6 address and uh, uh, forward uh, a reverse configuration. Mm. If you have a KVM machine, uh, that's uh, the common to start a KVM machine connected to VDE, you can just uh, add uh, in the, AC, uh, in the interface.t file, uh, the two lines uh, uh, of the first slide. And now, mm, I'm sorry for these two lines. Uh, it is explained in the next slide because uh, uh, I've taken, uh, as you can see, Phoenix saw, saw a a city-based, uh, uh, well-known uh, image. Uh, so to show you that there's nothing else uh, in the system, but uh, that configuration and uh, the files uh, generated by the script. Uh, these are general. These two files uh, are uh, the scripts uh, to use the fully qualified domain name the ACP in uh, if up if down, uh, which is. Uh, which are general, not related to this specific uh, address or this specific uh, node. Uh, so given you add these two files uh, to, to give, uh, if up, if down, uh, the rules uh, to apply in order to, get, to, to take uh, an interface up and down, and uh, I have fulfilled uh, my promise and uh, the premises, and uh, in this way, I've given uh, the uh, IP address uh, for what the reversal resolution in, uh, uh, in two lines. One more point, uh, I told you for the reversal resolution that uh, there is a cache of the recently uh, resolved names uh, to have the reversal resolution. One may say, but uh, after a while, this kind of cache uh, can uh, expire. But given the ACP that uh, from time to time is uh, renewing the, the, the address, uh, the ACP is also renewing the reverse solution. So everything seems to be in harmony. So, if you have a question or for further info, you can have a look of our wiki site uh, where there is the list, uh, the long list of our projects, or obviously you can contact me by email. Thank you. Thank you, Renzo. Any questions for Renzo? Andre. Hi, this is Andre from ISC. Um, so, so my question is, and I might have missed it, who is the target audience for this? Because it, it breaks quite a lot of assumptions about the IPv6, like privacy, or who, who configures the IP address. So, so who, who, is the, who is the end user? So who, who would use your technology? That, so that's my question. Uh, maintainers of DNS, or design of DNS, or the one uh, add this uh, feature or uh, maintain of the NASA or uh, 
too busy to add uh, uh, useless IPv6 addresses. So these features could be integrated in future DNS servers. Or uh, the community of DNS uh, uh, development can help us to, to, to provide a final solution, a final uh, implementation of these ideas uh, in the most effective way. Dimitri? <laughs> Hold on, give you a mic. For many highly available servers, it is common to assign multiple IP addresses to multiple hosts which serve the same fully qualified domain name, such that by definition you will have the hash collision. Uh -huh. How do you resolve that when you want to serve uh, archive.ubuntu.com from many servers which all should have IPv6 addresses? Good question. Uh, Don't you give those machines also IPs per service they run at a given time? You do, but normally you do, but if you want to use this, then all of them will get assigned the same hash and the same IP, right? I think we have two different kinds of uh, uh, users. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a huge web server uh, uh, supplying, managing, hundreds, millions of queries per second, you need that kind of uh, solutions and you have not so many of them, so even writing the address is not a problem. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you have uh, every switch in your room having an IP address uh, and you want to query that, so you want the, the address of that, uh, in such a case uh, writing down the 20, 128 bits for each of them is quite a daunting uh, uh, procedure. Think to what I first said, I said that we want to give the address of pro to processes. Mm -hmm. So in such a case, uh, one address is enough. Okay. One more quick question for Renzo. Uh, oh, that's two. Start here. Be, be quick. Is encryption something which is also of interest for DNS? Are people, I mean, hashing is one thing, but um, do people want to encrypt their DNS as well? Because once you've, once, you've, once you've hashed it, then I was thinking the next step would be to make it so other people can't snoop. Is, is that not how it works, or is that not an option? I don't think that's in this scope. Okay. But we're, we're, we're having a couple of talks about that later. Okay. Okay. So stick around. So, Erin, last question. What about IPv6 privacy extensions in this uh, context? Actually, this uh, substitutes the privacy extension because uh, one problem of the IPv6 auto uh, uh, con uh, stateless auto configuration is, is that you give your MAC address. This is just related with the name, so you don't have any problem with your uh, IP, uh, self generated IPv6 address. Nobody can see it. Okay, thank you, Renzo. Thanks to you. Thank you.